Not too long ago, we took a look at every single campaign level from Halo 3 and decided to try to break out of the map in a way that we had never done before in a prior video. And we all know how that turned out. So today we're back again, this time trying to complete the same quest, but in Halo Reach. And it's definitely gonna get interesting because we spent a lot of time already breaking out of maps in Reach. So we're gonna have to push the boundaries of this game even further than anything we've done before if we're gonna find a new glitch in every level. But first, what if Noble Six wanted to open up his own orthopedic supply store somewhere in New Alexandria that sells knee braces, foot supports, arm slings, and whatever else for people that fall out of Falcons. Well, we know he would need to use a website to best promote his brand out there. We definitely think he would use Squarespace, who actually sponsored this video. They are definitely the best all-in-one platform for website building, and you can learn more about this at the end of the video. So first things first, we have to jump into Winter Contingency. Now this level is interesting because we do know that there's a very popular shortcut using the Falcon, which is something we had tried to do before on the 360 version of Halo Reach, though for whatever reason, we couldn't figure out how to get it to work right. We did try the early section of the level by the rocks and the walls, and there's supposed to be a drop area here as well that we haven't covered before. For whatever reason, we couldn't get it to work. We did, however, find this little area by this building where some of the textures were invisible. There's a lot of barriers, but we couldn't get too far, but it was something we hadn't looked at before. But our big break we had was when we were able to actually manage to get the Falcon glitch to work, where we flipped over the Falcon, allowing us to jump in and fly around a bit. Now it's really cool to fly around the area just because you get such an interesting view and a sky view of winter contingency. And while there is this weird barrier that happens on this side of the level, we were able to actually break our way past it by manipulating the loading sequences just a bit. From there, we definitely had a very interesting time trying to explore outside of the map. Now we were doing this on stream on our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash rocket sloth YT. And we theorized while we were working on putting this together, whether or not the game would actually allow us to fly all the way to this mountain in the distance. So we took the time, we did the effort and we flew all the way over there. It was a very long flight and you definitely see a lot of weird things along the way. There's a lot of psychedelic stuff happening in the background and for a while it eventually feels like you're not even moving anymore as you clip through mountains and make your way towards this tall mountain though we did actually make it all the way to the mountain after enough time and being able to look back at the map from so far away it looks completely unrecognizable now the weird thing about this falcon glitch though is that you cannot jump out of the falcon so once you're in it you're in it unless you crash and flip and since we were so far out of the map we couldn't crash and flip either and we couldn't find a kill barrier so we had to revert to last checkpoint if we wanted to do anything else on this one. For this next one, we actually got a bit of help from Tepig from Halo Creation. He helped us with a bunch of these glitches and helped us find so many of these. So huge shout out to him for the help. But at the end of Oni Sword Base, we actually tried this strategy to get outside of the map, which was really unique here. Essentially using the cowbell skull to ensure that vehicles can take extra damage, you can actually knock a ghost outside of this map area and do some tricky parkour to climb up the end section. You want to make sure in the last area you take out all of the enemies in the sky and just leave one elite on the ground level so that the level won't actually end. And once we were able to get outside of the building, we were able to actually use the ghost to jump a barrier and get to the outside section, which led us completely out of the boundaries of this level. From there, we had free reign to run pretty much wherever we wanted and we didn't have to worry at all about hitting kill barriers or death barriers or anything like that along the way. Sure, there's a few places you could randomly die at. For the most part, it was really awesome to run around and see this level in a new perspective. There's this whole runway part that we never even realized existed because of the angle that you typically experience this level on. You have to really be looking for it to see it. And we thought it looked really cool when we got just a slightly different angle to see it at. Going on to Nightfall, this one was another interesting one that allowed us to also have full access to this level. We did the very typical forklift skip where you line your forklift up to clip through this wall quickly. And then from there, we jumped on top of this phantom and pretty much had to get really good at timing exactly when to armor lock so that we wouldn't fly off the phantom. But also since the mechanics in MCC on the Xbox One are different from the original one, it's a little trickier to do. We had to also know when we were approaching another barrier and armor lock through that so we could glitch past it and get free reign to this level. Then the hardest part was surviving 
surviving this jump where you had to land down below without dying. But after you make that, you have full access to the bottom area of the canyon. This was really cool because so many times I've played through Nightfall and I've gotten to just look down there and wonder what it's like down there. And instead, I get to run around down here, run through the water and see that there's nothing there. There's also this random banshee that's just way outside of the map all the way back that we discovered after running for a long time. Tip of the Spear is actually a little bit trickier to get out of the map on. Essentially, you have to use a warthog and line it up with this specific rock and then launch it onto the rock and then drive it up through a barrier and jump out at the right time when you're not touching the barrier but still have the warthog lined up in the right place. Then you have to manually push the warthog further down out of bounds and then lastly drive it over a section where at one point Luke and I had to get out and push the warthog. And then we had to wrap our way back around down a hill and then we had to make the warthog over a hill avoiding another kill barrier by this water. However, if we could do all of that without messing up, we had full access to the whole lower section of Tip of the Sphere. And this area is huge. I think it was something like 16 kilometers of explorable area technically. So while we spent a lot of time here, we definitely could probably spend some more and find some more interesting things down the road, which is one we'll probably come back to someday soon. One of the most interesting things though definitely are these vehicles that you typically see way up from the upper mountainside driving in the distance. But as you drive past them, you can see that there's these very low polygon versions of ghosts and wraiths and other vehicles that you would typically see driving down here, just kind of driving by. And they can really change in size. For a little while, one of the ghosts just became this mini little ghost and I thought it was hilarious. We then drove further down to some of the other spires in the distance and it looks like they're just these JPEG images just chilling there of spires rather than actual things. And then Tepig, of course, because he wanted to blow our mind even more when it comes to Halo Reach out of the map stuff, showed us a specific launch you can do by these weird scarab looking things if you time it out properly. I don't really know all the logistics, but essentially he lined the warthog up with this scarab at a certain checkpoint so we could try it multiple times and it would essentially launch us up into the air. And if done correctly, we could land on top of one of these giant ships in the sky, which was really, really cool. I never had imagined that I would explore this level from up here. And apparently there are ways to launch yourself across the other side. We tried many times. We got close a few times, but we didn't have too much luck with that. However, it was really cool just to make our way up here to begin with. Going on to Long Night of Solace, this one actually was towards the beginning when we're still at the beach section. Essentially, we killed this white elite, grabbed his concussion rifle, and then used the armor lock that you can grab from the front of the building and waited for the pelican to fly in. Once it got up close and we shot it a couple times just to make the pelican fly a little lower to the ground, Luke was able to jump on top of the pelican and ride it outside of the map just far enough so he could drop down and not die in the process. After that, I was able to respawn on him and we get a free reign to just explore this whole area behind the building. And it definitely isn't what you would expect a missile launch station or a space station type place to look like from the other side. Not the impression I originally got. There were a few weird little nuances we also noticed when we're outside of the map exploring here and these mountains are invisible so randomly you'll be going up in elevation then back down. We found these cannons that actually give us the option to jump in like they're warthog turrets though it didn't actually let us jump in them. But it was interesting to see the button pop up from time to time and on the back side of the building we can actually see this giant cube and we thought that was interesting too. Going on to Exodus this was actually one that inspired this whole video to begin with because Luke and I were playing on Exodus and we just started exploring around. But actually at the beginning area of the level, we got on top of this building with these little picnic tables and we thought that these areas along the side that didn't have kill barriers were a kind of cool look at the skybox. We then decided to try to break Exodus even more and we got to the top of the stairs on the side. But the really interesting stuff happened later in the level where you first encounter the brutes where essentially we jumped down to this lower area and we're able to find a couple of little cubby holes that essentially would keep us safe from kill barriers and we could run around these lower sections of the exodus level that are really areas you don't typically get to see and it's really cool that the game actually will allow you to survive a fall even further down to another lower section where you could run around a little bit though there are some barriers and then this huge pit that's kind of down here actually is a barrier in itself and you can kind of just float on it and run ride around down there. You're kind of stuck after you do this, but it was really cool to just kind of ride around in this lower area, especially because 
Exodus is one of those levels that already has other places that we've talked about in videos in the past that you can break out of. It's just really cool that there's even more that we've discovered on this level, and I think there's probably one or two we haven't seen yet that we'll have to look to in the future. Going on to New Alexandria, this is an easter egg that I've seen on YouTube many times before, but it's not one I had ever actually done before, so we went ahead and decided to do the Pelican and Phantom easter egg that allows us to get in Pelicans and a Phantom, and we ended up doing all Pelicans just because it was easier to do it without us randomly dying, but essentially once you do the whole easter egg and you activate the switch and you do what you have to do, you can essentially have free reign to fly anywhere. All the barriers go away, which makes this one of the easiest maps to break out of because it almost was Bungie's way of just allowing players to explore freely however they want. We flew around for quite a bit looking at different areas, just seeing what's out there, and it's really interesting to look at this destroyed section of New Alexandria. It just, you can really see the carnage is much worse than it looks like. I mean, everything's been decimated to a JPEG looking image, so I don't know. Nonetheless, this one is just a lot of fun, especially because you get to experience this out of the map glitch in a vehicle rather than just walking on foot for a long time. On the package, there's actually another easter egg that Bungie intentionally hid here that essentially has players splitting up into teams to hit certain switches, and if done correctly, the players get access to banshees, which you can now fly around in the map. After jumping in a banshee, we were able to fly over a barrier and quickly fly back down towards the Oni sword base, and essentially while the banshee Banshees do give you free reign to fly around wherever, much like the previous level. This interesting inside the sword base deloaded section looks really cool, and if you do it fast enough, you can actually activate this mini falcon glitch, which essentially takes the falcon that you see noble team fly in when they fly past you, and allows you to fly it, and it's shrunk in size, and really, really random, but funny nonetheless, and we really like this glitch too. And then we go to Pillar of Autumn, which was another one that we discovered on our own, though we do think there is a possible way that we could really break this map and maybe we'll do a whole dedicated video on Pillar of Autumn in the future just because of how much we think you can actually do on this level but this one's really easy to do in the early section of the final area you enter where you kind of do the firefight stuff you jump on a teammate's head or you do a grenade jump you can get onto the little gate here and you can drop down into this lower area then an alternative thing we found is that actually if you jump across and don't drop down but jump onto the cliff across you have full access to this whole cliff on the left side of the firefight section, which gives you a different angle of everything that's going on. You can look down and see the scarabs and other stuff going on down there, which we are going to try to find our way down there in an upcoming video, that's a guarantee. <laughs> but in the meantime, it was really cool to just kind of see this area from an outside perspective. One thing that we thought was really interesting though, is that once you clear the enemies and keys starts to fly in, a second pelican actually flies in at the same time and parks right here below the cliff and will sit there are waiting for you to activate the cutscene with keys. We really couldn't figure out what this random pelican was doing here, just kind of under the map or sitting behind the cliff. Somewhat of a mystery, we actually thought maybe it's a separate pelican that is used for the cutscene or something and it has to do with loading, but actually we were just overlooking a major thing, but if you watch the cutscene that plays right afterwards, there's a second pelican that obviously flies up during this time, and that's that pelican. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. If you guys don't know about Squarespace, yet, they are the best website building and hosting service out there easily. They have a ton of features provided in one really easy to use online tool. Whenever you create a website, one part you have to always consider is how it looks and feels to the users that you want to visit your website and you want them to get a first impression of your brand on. And Squarespace has so many different designs for so many categories like blogs, online stores, and much more that all feel interactive. They look clean and they're fully customizable. Customizing a website designed through Squarespace is super easy and you can make your website really feel like your own. They also have a top of the lines analytics feature that gives you all the information you need right there. You can easily find out where your users come from, what kind of content or products people look at the most, and much more. And it's always important to know your audience so you can build it and Squarespace allows you to get all that data that you need. There are so many things available through their online tool like scheduling for blog posts, merchandising, overviews, and much more. And basically, if you're running any type of website, Squarespace will have the features that make make it easiest for you, and if you want your website to truly stand out, you will of course need a unique domain, and whether you already have a domain or you want to buy one from Squarespace, they got you covered, and you can either integrate your existing domain into your new website, or just buy that domain name right there. So if you're interested, head over to squarespace.com forward slash rocketsloth to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name using code
own rocket sloth. But hey, after all of that, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe with notifications on. For more videos just like this one, and you won't miss anything we upload, even if YouTube's acting all whack. Also, if you want to, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow me at Rocket Elijah, or you can follow Luke at Rocket Sloth Luke. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye, guys.